Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I'm Corsic Hickory, the Drunken Underwhelming. I'm about to teach you how to dominate your Thanksgiving. That's right. Three recipes, two types of mashed potatoes, and stuffing. We're going to get to it in this video. So I'm going to start by dicing up some onions. I'm showing you with this knife just because if I can do it with this big knife, you can do it with any knife. Knife skills are something that everybody should know. But uh, yeah, we're going to quickly dice. This is my beautiful... Uh, I love this blade. Yes, it is not the right tool for the job, but that is on purpose. I wanted to look, you know, kind of kind of badass on camera. And uh, anyways, we're gonna start by dicing some onions. These are for the stuffing. And uh, so in this recipe, we're gonna make my super sausage stuffing as well as two types of mashed potatoes. We're gonna do rosemary parmesan and bacon caramelized onion and cheddar mashed potatoes. These are, the onions are being sliced now for the caramelized onions or the uh, caramelized onion, bacon, cheddar, mashed potatoes. Yeah, I go all out. We don't, uh, we don't hold back, man. It's Thanksgiving. You want to dominate Thanksgiving, let everyone know that you know what you're doing. This is a great way to do it, and I do it in exactly this order. I filmed this in order. It was actually filmed from last year's Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, here we go. Black River meets bacon. Selected because on the back, it basically tells you if you don't know how to cook bacon, you should contact your local politician and let them know that school has failed us, uh, which it has. So anyways, here we are, <laughs> dicing some bacon. Uh, real simple, just cut into small chunks. It really doesn't matter. Uh, nobody's gonna complain if the bacon's too big or too small. They're gonna be in the mashed potatoes that all that flavor is gonna be all up in there. And uh, yeah, so next we're gonna check out some sausage. I like to use, uh, this is Vermont salumi maple breakfast sausage you could use any sage or maple breakfast sausage as your base one i use the robot maple sausage from green mountain smokehouse the links i'm going to start by searing the links in a cast iron pan uh heads up you should probably spray it i didn't in this video but that's something uh you can learn from my mistakes my friends so yeah we're gonna uh we're gonna saute those out uh you're gonna basically just get a good sear on both sides uh yep place them evenly in the pan and we're gonna do a little flipperoo basically we're just browning them you are not fully cooking these sausages at this point point. and the reason for doing these first is so that you don't have to uh you don't have to use a separate pan this is all one cast iron pan for the entire batch of stuffing and that's actually what we're gonna bake it in so it's really the stuffing as rich delectable and delicious as it is is a one pan dish which is awesome not too bad and clean up so after those are seared, we're gonna take them off now, uh, put those on a paper plate or uh, a plate. If you wanna do dishes, put them on a regular plate, but we're a little white trash around here. So we're gonna put these on a paper plate. And uh, then we learned our lesson. We're gonna spray it. Next, we're gonna throw the Vermont maple breakfast sausage from Vermont Salumi in there. And then I have a couple ends from work. That's, uh, we typically slice these into patties and uh, we end up with some uh, end up with some ends so I uh they come in like a five pound block it's probably like two and two pounds or so uh, we're gonna use two bags of stuffing we use two packages of breakfast links so there's about four ish pounds of sausage in the stuffing but it's Thanksgiving like stop worrying about calories what are you doing don't worry about that anyways we're gonna chop this up I'm using a fish spatula you could use any type of spatula I wouldn't use a rubber one but any type of metal spatula work for this kind of chop it up uh, we're gonna get a, about halfway cooked on it we're gonna get like a nice brown uh, before we move into our next step at this point you should have your stuffing uh, mix off to the side I'll show you in a second what I used uh, you should have your stock out uh, your salt pepper out uh, you got your sausage links on the side you are ready to go you gotta you got some butter out yep just choppy 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 and boom we're moving right into brown town oh yeah then we're gonna add the onions flavor town coming on up yeah a little bit of sear on there uh, we're gonna let those cook for a few minutes let the onions sweat out you want them pretty much cooked by the time you uh you start adding in any bread i mean this is gonna cook in the oven but yeah right about there you can see they're pretty well sweated out and now we're gonna take just our normal bag of uh herb stuffing drop that in there a uh, nice tip is to add a little bit of bell's turkey seasoning in your stuffing as well 
Now let that cook for a minute. We're gonna kind of stir it around, let it absorb some of the uh, sausage fat and onion juice that is cooked out. And uh, it's gonna absorb a little bit, but then we are going to go and add some stock. Yeah, that's the point where we, uh, we just added some stock. We're stirring it around now. Uh, the amount of stock you're gonna have to add is gonna be dependent on lots of things, including, and not including, uh, including but not up into the humidity in your area. Yes, that will actually affect a lot of baking and such, especially things like this where you're, uh, you're trying to regulate the amount of moisture in it. It's pretty dry up here. So there I did, I added a little bit more uh, I added a little too much stock, so we added a little more stuffing. Now we're gonna pile the sausages on top of there. And uh, we're gonna add a couple slabs of butter on top, and then that bad boy's ready to go in the oven. So that's gonna get set off the side. Now we're gonna get to our mashed potato prep. Because, uh, you know, mashed potatoes, super important. Something everybody loves at Thanksgiving. And uh, yeah, the stuffing's gonna be great. So yeah, we're gonna start by cooking off that bacon. We're gonna cook it down pretty good, man. You want this bacon, I like to get it crispy. Uh, it's gonna take a few minutes for sure. And you probably wanna go a little longer than you think you are. Uh, and you're gonna go, I don't wanna babysit it. Because bacon can be temperamental, especially when you're trying to get it this crispy. Because uh, it's only gonna get soggier sitting in the mashed potatoes. Like it's not gonna get crispier over time. It's only gonna get soggier. And we're gonna really take our time here. Let that bacon cook out. Well, it's got a, a nice uh, nice level of darkness to it. You know, want most of that fat rendered out. And then we're, uh, yeah, we're just about there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, start to pull the bacon to the side. Now we're gonna use another, another paper plate, pull the bacon out with a pair of tongs. And uh, then we're gonna drain off that bacon fat. Oh yeah, nice drain job. We're gonna leave some in there because we're gonna caramelize our onions in this bacon fat. That's gonna add a whole lot of flavor to the entire dish. Oh yeah, a nice little sear going on there. ASMR sizzle. But yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna mix those around with a pair of tongs. They're gonna cook for quite a while. Uh, caramelized onions should take you a while. I used to have a friend that said if they don't take you less than a couple hours, you're doing it wrong. Uh, I obviously didn't go that long. This probably probably took me about 20 minutes to get there. And uh, they're nice, super tender, pretty sweet. And uh, we got our bacon on the side. Oh yeah, next it's ready to prep the potatoes. We're not gonna peel these russets. I used to have to peel potatoes, uh, You and you may. Uh, you may run into a situation where you have uh, family members who have dietary restrictions and such. You know, uh, I have a, a high rate of diverticulitis in my family. So uh, I used to have to peel everything and make sure there was no seeds and no stringy bits and all sorts of food restrictions and not so much anymore. So now we're gonna take uh, a quart of heavy cream. We're gonna split it in two. So it's gonna get a pint per batch. We're gonna put a pint in the, uh, that's the onions. We put the bacon back on top of it. The other one is just straight. Uh, straight cream we're gonna add a whole stick of butter to it and by to it i mean to each batch of cream for the mashed potatoes and uh i misspoke we're gonna add two sticks of butter <laughs> to each each batch of mashed potatoes yeah don't worry about calories guys it's thanksgiving you're gonna uh your, your family's gonna love this next we're gonna take a few spig sprigs of rosemary and drop them right into the milk and the cream or the cream and the butter we're gonna let that simmer. You wanna kinda steep it, keep it at a, a medium low, and uh, it will just absorb a ton of rosemary flavor. You don't wanna let it go too long. You might wanna taste the cream butter mixture every once in a while. Realize that the potatoes will dilute that flavor a bit, but it's still gonna be, it can get too strong. In which case, I would uh, just melt some fresh butter and cream and only use part of the rosemary one. But if you're paying attention, it shouldn't be too bad. And uh, yeah, look at that sexy butter melt on top of that bacon. Oh yeah. That is some beautiful stuff right there. So yeah, we got the, uh, the oven going on. 375 and start. Potatoes are boiling. Uh, yeah. I only, basically the only point of dicing them is they take less time. 
Uh, you could skip that step or you could just use small red bliss potatoes. You can drain the potatoes out, of course. And, uh, oh yeah, look at them. Perfectly done. That's definitely one that you want to make sure you get right, is make sure your mashed potato cook. There they are falling back into the bowl. We're about to go to mash town. I love my little masher thing. <laughs> this is like the most fun part of prepping Thanksgiving. I mean, other than cooking the sausage and having the house just smell like sausage and bacon all day, that's pretty sweet too. But yeah, here we go, just mashing up them taters. And we're gonna do this for both batches, obviously. Um, it's the exact same steps for both. That's the beauty of flavoring your cream is that you could even cook, if you had to say a really big pot, you could cook all your potatoes in one batch then split them out into multiple bowls after mashing them and then mix in your creams and you'd have different types of potatoes. It's also a good time to add other garnishes if you want, say you wanted, I don't know. You do all sorts of funky stuff in there. You want blue cheese in one of them? Uh, blue cheese, bacon, mashed potatoes would be pretty sweet. You could do all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, we're gonna scoop out the rosemary, get out most of it. Now, you don't really want much of those leaves left in there because they're not fun. They don't feel good in your teeth, which is why we're using the little uh, scooper to get those out. Also, that's a diverticulitis issue if, uh, if you have someone in your family that has that. Here we go. Let's mount those mashed potatoes, all that butter and cream. Ooh. Yeah, we lost a couple of rosemary leaves there. That's gonna be fine. You just don't want the majority of them in there. Oh man, that was a, that was a sexy pour right there. The bacon and the onions just getting down. Next, we're gonna add a bag. Now, here's a here's a pro tip: use a 50% fat cheddar because you've already got all the fat from the bacon. Well, not all the fat from the bacon. You took some out, but the fat from the bacon and the cream and the butter. And it you, it would behoove you to use a sharp, light cheddar. But yeah, don't get scared of the salt either. Don't 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 wuss out on me now. Uh, and that will prevent them from being a lot of times when i used to make these and i would use a full fat cheddar people would be like oh they're kind of greasy using a half fat cheddar will definitely help that situation here we go just mash it down in it doesn't really matter if you break up those uh those onions or not all that flavor is going to be there you're still going to get the texture here we are just using some cheap grated parmesan you could use shredded parmesan you could use shaved parmesan you can really do whatever the hell you want with these you could do rosemary cheddar. You could put some thyme in there. This is just a template for you to take and uh, take with you to dominate your Thanksgiving. Uh, isn't that what it's all about? Is being the guy that brings the dish that everybody absolutely loves. And this is how I transfer it down the road. Two pots and a brown, brown box. And uh, here is a picture of the finished product. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a little bit. And uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you dominate. I hope that uh, everything comes out great. Here's a little flyby of the whole spread down there at Thanksgiving. I didn't make all these dishes. I just made the stuffing and the mashed potatoes, but just to, so that other people do put in work and uh, we have an awesome Thanksgiving every year. I'm really stoked about it this year. And back to my stuff. Oh yeah. Bacon caramelized onion mashed potatoes, hickory super sausage stuffing, and finally the rosemary Parmesan taters. Hope you guys have a beautiful Thanksgiving. Cheers. Drop Magician out.